It's December 3rd on our countdown to Christmas. We have a story today that Mrs. W has chosen that I haven't read yet. Right, and you'll want to scroll down to right there. Right here at the summary? Yeah. Okay, so this story is called The Gift of the Magi. Is and someone, someone in the comments recommended it. So if you have a story that you think we should read, you could leave it in the comments. Yeah, that, that would be really helpful. We would appreciate that. All right, let's begin. Della Young is a devoted young married woman. Christmas Eve finds her in possession of a meager $1.87, the sum total of her savings, with which she wants to buy a gift for her husband, Jim. A recent cut in the family income from an ample $30 a week to a stingy $20 has turned Della's frugality into parsimony. That's a word you don't hear every day. Although she lives in an $8 a week flat and her general surroundings, even by the greatest stretch of the imagination, do not meet the standard of genteel poverty, Della determines that she cannot live through Christmas without giving Jim a tangible reminder of the season. Distraught, she clutches the $1.87 in her hands as she moves discontentedly about her tiny home. Suddenly, catching a glance of herself in a cheap pier glass mirror, a maneuver possible only for the slender and agile viewer, the perfect solution suggests itself. Whirling about with happiness, she lets down her long, beautiful hair. It is like brown sable and falls in caressing folds to below her knees. And after a moment of self-admiration, in another half moment res reservation, during which time, she, time a tear streaks down her face, she resolutely puts on her old hat and jacket and leaves the flat. Della's quick step take her to the shop of Madame, Madame Sofreny, an establishment that trades in good and hair goods of all kinds. Entering quickly, lest her nerve desert her, she offers to sell her hair. Madame Sofreny surveys the luxuriant tresses, unceremoniously slices them off, and hands Della $20. For the next two hours, Della feels herself in paradise, temporarily luxuriating in the knowledge that she can buy anything she wants. She decides on a watch fob for Jim's beautiful old watch. If there are two treasures in the world which Jim and Della Dillingham Young are inordinately and justly proud of their hair lately and gladly sacrificed and Jim's revered gold watch, handed down to him by his grandfather. She finally sees exactly what she wants, a platinum watch fob that costs $21. She excitedly appreciates Jim's reaction when he sees the proper chain for his watch. Until now, he has been using an old leather strap, which despite the watch's elegance, has forced him to look at the time sur <laughs> sur surreptitious surreptitiously. <laughs> surreptitiously, thank you. <laughs> He's not, very, not real proud of it. Uh, arriving back at the flat, breath, left back at the frat, fl the flat, breathless but triumphant, Della remembers her newly bobbed appearance. She reaches for the curling iron, and soon a mass of close cropped curls adorns her shorn head. She stares at her anxious, at herself anxiously in the mirror, hoping that her husband will still love her. As is her usual custom, she prepares dinner for the always punctual Jim, and sits down to await his arrival. The precious gift is tightly clutched in her hand. She mutters an imprecation to God so that Jim will think she still is pretty. At precisely seven o'clock, she hears Jim's familiar steps on the stairs, his key in the door. He is a careworn young man, only 22, already burdened with many responsibilities. He opens a door, sees Della, and an indiscernible look, neither sorrow nor surprise, overtakes him. His face can only be described as bearing a mask of melancholy disbelief. Even though Della rushes to assure him that her hair grows fast and that she will soon be back to normal, Jim cannot seem to be persuaded that her beautiful hair is really gone. Della implores him to understand that she simply could not have lived through Christmas without buying him a gift. She begs him for her sake, as well as the seasons, to be happy. And Jim, as if walking from a trance, 
embraces her and readily tells her that there was nothing a shampoo or a haircut could do to Della that would alter his love for her. In the excitement, he has forgotten to give her gift and now he appears, now he offers her a paper wrapped package. Tearing at it, eagerly Della finds a set of combs, tortoise shell, bejeweled combs that she has so often admired in the shop on Broadway. Combs whose color combines perfectly with her own vanished tresses. Her immense joy turns to tears but quickly returns when she remembers just how fast her hair grows. Jim has not yet seen his beautiful present. She holds it out to him and the precious metal catches all the nuances of light in the room. It is indeed a beautiful specimen of a watch chain, and Della insists on attaching it to Jim's watch. Jim looks at her with infinite love and patience and suggests that they both put away their presents. For a while, Jim has sold put his presents away for a while. Jim has sold his watch in order to buy the combs for Della, even as she has sold her hair to buy the watch chain for Jim. Like the Magi, those wise men who invented the tradition of Christmas giving both Della and Jim have unwisely sacrificed the greatest treasures of their house for each other. However, of all those who give gifts, these are inevitable, the wisest. That is a wonderful story. Inevitably? Story, inevitable, the wisest? Inevitably. Inevitably, what did I say? Inevitable? Yeah. My public education. <laughs> that reminds me of the, remember that story from the... Um, Little House on the Prairie. Little House on the Prairie, where... Uh, what, what Laura, was I think she sells her horse to buy a stove for her mom. For her mother. And Mary sells... Mary works really hard to buy her dad, to buy material to sew her dad a shirt. And Charles had worked really hard to buy a stove, and... Carolyn had worked really hard, or saved extra money selling eggs and things to buy, to, and they made a shirt out of the same material. So it wasn't quite the same, but they both mm -hmm. had to hide away their gifts. Mm -hmm. It was a nice story too. It is a wonderful story. What do you think about that story, Jack? I, I think it's kind of sad, but kind of it's kind of happy at the same time. Yeah. It's very selfless, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, if you have a story you'd like us to read, uh, one that's a favorite, uh, leave it in the comments. Um, if you can leave a link to where we can find the story, that would be appreciated. And um, we'll, we'll certainly give you credit. Honorable mention. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next story.